Okay, morning everyone. Mm -hmm. It is morning. October 14th and like, I don't know, the umpteenth widget Wednesday. And uh, per a previous email, I decided to kind of really go back to the beginning um, because I started to realize that one of the most important widgets you can engage for your business is the one you already own. <laughs> and it's the one between your two ears. <laughs> and unless you get that working well, uh, all the other widgets and all the other solutions may not be as effective for you. So are you all willing to kind of explore that idea? <laughs> the widget between your ears. Um, so what I wanted to do is just explain. So this is actually the kickoff for a brand new um, mastermind slash master class group where we're going to go into to the very beginning and we're going to incorporate some of the stuff we've been talking about in the marketing group. Uh, but also we're going to go into a little bit more on um, creating tools that are going to help you make your business more effective, more efficient, save you time and, and give you more time to do what you love. And hopefully you're in business doing something you love, right? We're our own boss. So if we're not doing a job that we love, we, all we can do is point at ourselves because we gave ourselves this job. So um, let me go ahead and first of all, show you. So what I did was I was going to do a PowerPoint intro page, but because this is eventually going to go into Teachable, I wanted to show you the little preview um, clip. Remember we talked about having like an intro clip for some of your videos. I created one in Magisto and I just wanted to show that to you because it kind of tells a story. Intro clips are like your tagline, your story, why you're gonna be talking about what you talk about. So again, let me share my screen. All right, uh, and hopefully this will play. Sometimes vi videos don't play well on Zoom. So I'm just, it's really short. Let me just play this for you. you can you all see my screen? <laughs> So just did that real quick with Magista. And what's nice is because, you know, my tagline has been forever, high tech um, solutions, high touch strategies for high five results. And the visual really creates that energy and it gets me energized. And I wanted to show that to you because we're gonna talk about a lot of that during today's call. So let me flip over to my, and you know, this is true, even if you're not doing a teachable call, you can actually incorporate something like that into videos you post on YouTube or whatever, just makes it a little bit more interesting to, to watch than just a talking head or um, a slideshow PowerPoint. So let me go to my. People actually touching each other, now that's different. I know, huh? <laughs> Yeah, some of these commercials you see on TV haven't quite been COVID uh, oh. screened or whatever they do, right? But that's just, that's just, hopefully we'll get back. All right, so I'm going to show you my PowerPoint. All right, so, oops. let me see, from the beginning. All right. So again, this is kind of like the boring slideshow intro that I had, but I really wanted to just show you my tagline, because we're going to talk about that. So today we're going to be talking about maximizing your mojo. And of course, that's an acronym. So we're going to talk about what that means. But I wanted to go back to the history of the name, if you haven't heard this. Acceleration uh, Services has been my business name for, what, geez, 20 years now. And it's a word I made up. Uh, it means to accelerate the process to get from the point of origin, or where you are today, all the way up to your, I'm gonna move your, uh, you guys, the peak of potential or your excellent self. Um, I really wanted to help people use tools and use their ideas to get to where they wanna be. I mean, cause that's why we're all here on this planet, right? <laughs> to, have, to have some kind of impact on somebody or someone. Um, so that was my goal with this business. And how most of us, I think all of us on this call are doing this is using our business as that vehicle. We have lots of ways where we can accomplish that, but we're here to talk about the business aspect. And what's important about the business and critical to the business is you. 
because you're the one that's driving the business. If you don't get yourself tuned up, your business could be wonderful, but you're driving that business. So you have to get yourself kind of tuned up and ready to go as well. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to go back to the high touch aspect of my tagline and talk about your mojo. So I looked this definition up. Mojo is a great word, but I wanted to see what Webster's said about it. And it Mojo is a seemingly magical personal charm, power, influence, which again is that magic you bring to your business. It's something that only you own. You're a unique individual. And even though you have competition in your industry, you're the only one that can bring what you bring to the table to the table. So that's up to you. And to get back your mojo, because you heard about getting back your mojo, it's to re regain one's confidence, energy, enthusiasm. If you're um, just starting out in your business, you might lack some confidence. If be you've been in your business, you know, doing that little treadmill thing for the last 5, 10, 20 years, you may be losing <laughs> some of your energy and your enthusiasm. So we're going to talk about regaining that and energizing our business so we can get again to accelerate our journey from point of origin to our peak per uh, personal performance. And that again goes to that peak of potential. All right, so how to claim or regain your mojo. The M stands for motivation. I, I've said on several of these calls that we've done in Zoom, I can't be more excited about your business than you are. <laughs> You're the only one that can drive your own business. And again, if your energy level is low or your confidence level is low, you gotta build that up because that's what's gonna drive your business. So my questions to you are, and this is homework, okay? The, the purpose for this masterclass is not just to learn something new or relearn something that you heard before, but actually to put it into play. So I want you to start making lists. Um, like what pops you out of bed in the morning? You know, where do you get your energy? If you've ever um, had a job where you, <laughs> I don't want to go to work today, you know that your energy's low, it's hard to get that up. So, you know, you want to do something that gets you excited. That's going to get you up, you know, up in the morning. I spend my mornings, usually I wake up about seven o'clock and I'll spend about 15 minutes in bed thinking about the day. And I come up with some awesome ideas in those, that 15 minutes because my mind is clear. There's not a lot going on in terms of um, uh, things that happen during the day. So I can really focus on what's going to get me excited to get out of bed. Um, do you frequently say, I can't believe I'm getting paid to do this. <laughs> Isn't that a great, a great phrase? I mean, hopefully you're in a job where you get to say that a lot. But if you're not, you need to kind of rework the job, figure out what's missing or what, what can I get rid of so I enjoy what I'm doing more. You know, and again, it's keeping that enthusiasm. And in the um, attraction algorithm, we talk about authenticity. If your energy is low and your enthusiasm is low, how do you expect to get other people, meaning your target market, excited about what you do? So again, this is part of what needs to drive your business is your own energy and enthusiasm. And what is the light at the end of the tunnel that will pull you through the tough times? This last year has, I, I think, in all sense, has been a tough time for most businesses. So again, what's your confidence? You can't wait for somebody to fix it. You have to have confidence to go find solutions for yourself or you know, start to work on um, you know, fine tuning your business. So again, that you can get through it. It's your own energy. It's like pointing the finger at yourself as the fixer of your business. So here's a th hint. Make a list of the things you love to do whether it's writing or speaking or planning or whatever, and then do more of that. So check your to-do list for today and make sure you at least have a few things on there that you love to do, even if it's only five minutes, because that's what's gonna get you energized and excited. Okay, so that's the motivation part of the mojo. Moving on, objectives. We all have to have goals, right? 
you don't have a goal with your business, how will you know when you get hit the goal? So I want you to start thinking about goals, meaning income. How much money do you want to make in a month? How much more money do you want to make in one or two years? Then start to write that down. Because again, unless you have a specific idea of what that is, how do you know when you're going to hit it? Impact. How do you benefit your, your clients? You know, what influence or impact do you have on your clients as far as do you save them time? Do you make them money? Do you um, provide a service that they don't love to do themselves? Isn't that awesome? We, we all have talents that nobody else is good at or loves to do. So why don't you do that? Because you love to do it and you're good at it. I don't think any of us do things we um, are not good at. <laughs> we can't charge for that if we're not good at something. So take what you have in, in the, your gifts and see how you can impact other people, your clients. What's the impression people have about you? you know, how are you perceived in the market? Are you a game changer? Are you just kind of a brown cow in a purple cow world? Or are you the purple cow? And that has to do with branding. So go, what are your objectives in terms of the impression you make on other people, on the work you do, when you enter a room, when you enter a Zoom call, all that adds up. And then what's the influence you have? You could influence your industry. That's the game changer part. You can be a trendsetter, a game changer, or how do you influence your community in terms of philanthropy or you know, um, influence that way? So some of your objectives will be business focused and some may not, but again, write those down. And here's the hint, write them down and then make them smart. We're gonna talk about smart goals and you probably have heard this cause this has been around a long time but I've kind of um, made it a little bit more concise. That's, my, that's what I love to do is I like to tie things together. Okay, so SMART goals. Again, this is back to objectives, but how do you make those goals SMART? You make it specific. It's the who, what, where. If we've been, if we've been talking about marketing, it's who's your tar ideal target market? Where are they demographically? You know, what is their income? Or what is their industry? So in this case, I'm being uh, specific about details about your audience, but you could be specific about any goal that you set but make sure it's not too vague. So, um, and back to a goal, like for your income goal, if your goal is to make $5,000 a month, be specific. Is that after expenses, before expenses? You have to be very specific about it. Okay, the M in the SMART is measurable. That's the how. What are the milestones for this goal? Uh, how do you measure your progress in achieving that goal? And then again, making adjustments because what you plan today may not be what you end up tomorrow or next week. So look at the, how you're gonna measure this uh, progress toward this goal. A is achievable, uh, all, but I put action driven because you want it to be realistic but you also want, you can make it realizable. And let me explain the difference. I was thinking of an example. So if your goal is to learn how to scuba dive, but you live in the middle of Kansas, <laughs> learning to scuba dive may be a little unrealistic at that point. However, you can realize that by either moving to California or by um, seeing if there's a, swimming pool place that teaches you how to scuba dive. You don't have to scuba dive in the ocean, but you can learn how to do that at some facilities. So you wanna make sure your goal is achievable and action driven, meaning you can do something about it. And that's again, the difference between realistic, is it something that I can achieve or can I make it happen by making it realizable? Relevant, that's the why. And that goes back to your long-term goals. We talked about point of, point of origin and your destination. You know, a lot of us can end up down rabbit holes, right? You know what rabbit holes are. <laughs> those are those tangents and those side things that take us off course. So when you look at your goals, make sure it's relevant to where you wanna go. 
make sure it's going to be something that's going to get you to where you want to be at the end of that journey. And that's the why. And that's part of where that enthusiasm will come from. Make sure these goals are relevant to you and not just um, somebody else's. I think, was it Jim Rohn said something about if you're not, if you don't have your own plans, you're part of somebody else's. This is, this is you taking control. And the last, last one is time bound. That's the when. It's target dates, uh, kind of goes back to milestones. Um, so again, just like any acronym, they're not perfect. <laughs> but this is what you'll find if you Google SMART goals. There's variations of it, but this is what you could focus on as far as determining if your goal is SMART. Put all of these uh, things to it and say, are they uh, action driven? Are they relevant? What's the time base? What's the milestones? How do I measure progress? And is it specific enough? And the hint is to review and revise them. Again, maybe once a week, maybe on Monday, you kind of review your goals, tweak them a little bit, make adjustments and move on. All right. Hey, the J in, in Mojo, it's a justification. Goes back to um, defining your unique selling proposition. It's your purple cow. We all have competition. So what is your uniqueness factor? What makes you that purple cow in the brown cow world? What's your authority? Um, and we have to own that ourselves. I remember when I first started my business, it was like I was teaching workshops because it turns out I love to teach. And you know, I, I, I had no experience. I led teams in the jobs I've held, but I really didn't have any experience doing it. So I had to have that confidence that what I had to offer, even though I was like 30 minutes into the business, was worth something. And you have to work on that yourself. Again, it's not going to come from the outside. It's going to come from you. Um, what value do you provide your clients and how are you perceived? It's not the business we bring to the marketplace, it's the value that we bring. Jim Rohn said that. And we have to again decide what can we provide to the market that we can charge for that is unique to us and how, do, how am I perceived? That's that branding purple cow stuff. So you see how it's all tied together but it's gotta come from you. And then put value on your time and energy and compare that with your comp uh, competition. I'm just checking something out. I am recording. <laughs> I had a moment in my recording. Okay, so put value on your time and energy. Uh, I've had this conversation with a few people on the call and you know, free is okay, but people put value on what they invest. And if they're investing zero money, a lot of times getting to them to invest anything is hard. And that's a lot of um, energy that you're pouring down into a market that may not be able to, to uh, benefit you in terms of income, et cetera. So start to put value on your time and energy. And I would suggest maybe putting a dollar amount, looking at the industry. And again, some of you have been around for a while. Some of you are just starting and look at your competition and say, okay, what are they charging for an hour? And write that down. So every time you invest in, a, cl a class like this or in learning something new and say, okay, I'm spending this much, $100 an hour or $150 an hour or whatever that is to you, I'm investing that because we think our time is free, but it's not because our time has value out in the market. And if we're giving our time away for free because we're doing webinars or do, learning something new, we, we need to put a value on that to make sure that we're investing that wisely in our business. So here's a hint, monetize your motivators. This was one of the uh, things I mentioned, I wake up at seven o'clock and I think about. Um, if you monetize what you love to do, that gives you the motivation and the energy to pop out of bed. Now, I'm gonna tell you this because I'm kind of excited about it. So I love to teach, uh, love to travel, haven't done a whole lot of it. 
uh, planning a trip to Arizona and New Mexico in December and thinking, okay, I, how can I monetize that trip? What can I do that I can possibly make money at or at least write off the trip? So I started thinking about this. I, as some of you know, I've kind of, one of my titles I've given myself is the tech whisperer because I take technology and I kind of make it <laughs> understandable for non-techie people. And I thought about creating a business card or even a little postcard. And then when I walk into a business in New Mexico or Arizona, whether it's a restaurant or an art gallery or something like that, I'm going to give them this card and say, I introduce myself. Hey, I'm the tech whisperer. And I have an online, I haven't decided if it's going to be a podcast or a YouTube channel or something. And I'd like to, one, interview you. And two, show you how you can improve your website. And if I cannot find at least one, two, or three things that will improve your website, I'm going to give you $100. Now, if you're a business owner, wouldn't that intrigue you a little bit? <laughs> I mean, because I know I can find one, two, or three things with any website that can be improved. So I know that the risk of paying them $100 isn't that much. But my whole thing is to, to show them my authority, to show them my enthusiasm and be able to record that. So my, my goal is to every business, again, it's because it's hard to go into business and say, you know, your website sucks or, <laughs> or, you know, but this is just an introduction. And they, some of them may bite and some of them may not. But if only a few did, now I can start to write off part of that business trip and I may start to get clients in New Mexico, Arizona, and I can do this wherever I travel. So that was my idea to how to monetize my motivators about traveling, about teaching, about being able to use technology to help me facilitate that. So that's just one idea to think, you know, what motivates you? What do you, what do you love to do? And how do you monetize that? You may not be taking advantage of those skills yet that have value out there. So just kind of think about that. Okay, so that's the justification in the mojo. The last one is obstacles. Now that may seem like a, a, a something weird to kind of focus on, but you have to because we all have them, right? And if we don't focus on them, how are we gonna fix them? So you have to identify what is standing in your way, whether it's time, money, skills, or even interest. Because there's things that, um, I hate to do and it's weird because the one thing that I've always oh I don't say have an aversion to but I was never really interested in was money I remember when I was taking um, an environmental studies class I was told to take an economics class and I didn't because it didn't really interest me and even now invoicing is my Achilles heel I even have really good tools and still, you know, focus on invoicing my clients is something that I, I avoid because I don't really like to do it. So those are things that we have to see is this getting in my way and figuring out ways to get around that because obviously I need to invoice my clients. I should invoice my clients. And so how do I make that more um, fun or more motivating? So again, if you look at what you, what's getting in your way and where your, your Achilles heel is now you can fix it because you've identified it so you might want to create smart goals to overcome these obstacles so if you have a skill set that you want to kind of uh, uh, tune up you could either you could either find a resource whether it's a software program or something that will help you do it more efficiently you can outsource it which means you can, um, you know, give it to somebody else to do. Hire a, a contractor to do that job for you. Well, let's talk about videos. So, for example, I'm kind of learning new tools like a Magisto to create little short videos for myself. Because to hire a videographer, that can get pricey, especially if I'm changing things all the time. So you can hire a videographer or you could insource it by, again, teaching yourself to do some things keep it in-house and add to your own skill level. But don't do it unless you love to do it. Because, and you know, think, give yourself some time because you may hate it because you're new at it. You know, like whenever, if you ever learned a new uh, skill, like let's say playing tennis or something, 
you may not have loved it in the beginning because you weren't very good at it. But if you practice, you may find you like it because actually you're better than you thought that you could be. So challenge yourself, but at some point realize, you know, this, I'm really not good at it. I really don't want to do it and invest in outsourcing that because again, your time has value in it. So rather than spend three hours doing something you hate, hire somebody to, to do it in one hour and spend those three hours doing something you love, you're good at, and you can monetize. Um, and hint, incorporate these goals into your business game plan. Because obstacles are just as important as business goals, getting, getting through those obstacles. Okay. So today is just the tip of the iceberg, as you can tell. This was the kind of a, the kickoff to everything. Let me kind of build this from the bottom up. So we talked about your mojo. So again, what's between your two ears is the thing you got to work on first, because all these other things aren't going to be able to be as effective, um, smooth, um, <clears throat> if we don't work on the mojo first. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. So then we can work on brand refinement. We talked about branding. How are you perceived? So now that you know your mojo, how do you refine that? And how do you present that to the marketplace? You got to work on that. Then you got to take it to the marketplace. Marketing includes the social media we've been doing, networking we've been doing at PWN, um, any kind of other marketing avenues you've been doing. Because now that you've got your mojo and your brand, now you take it out to the marketplace. After that, it's the follow-up. And this is the thing we've been starting to work on now is having a system in place so the people that you bring into your realm, your circle of influence, can be followed up with. Whether it's a, um, a sequence of events or maybe a newsletter, you know, quarterly newsletter, there's different ways to follow up. But you need, and again, this is the part that none of us... Um, well, I think if you have a couple of clients, it's easy to manage that. If you start to get dozens of clients and dozens of people coming into your circle of influence, something's going to happen. Something's going to fall between the cracks. And you've just lost that opportunity. So we need, again, systems in place that we can efficiently follow up with them and not, and not lose those people who would, might follow through the cracks. Then there's the sales. You know, we've been talking about some of these workshops about landing pages. How do we engage a landing page that now becomes your sales force? Putting a really effective video on it, you know, to explain what this tool or product or service you're selling does. Giving them a way, easy way to, to follow up with you, whether it's a click to call or a fill out the form or a chat bot or something that's going to convert that click into a customer. So that's another layer that we have on top of it. Getting repeat business. You know, we've been talking in some of these series about how do we get somebody who does a one purchase into doing repeat businesses? Because it's easier to resell a new product or service to somebody who already knows, likes, and trusts you than to send out breadcrumbs out into the social media realm and try to influence new people to come to you. So again, we can do both. I mean, cer certainly, you know, do your marketing, but again, how do you, you how do you create this um, bubble of influence where you can get them to purchase different or new things from you? And again, that's monetize your mojo, monetize those things that you're, that you love to do. And be creative. That's what's nice. You're your own boss. So you can create divisions of your business that are going to focus on different things, right? And last is referrals. You know, asking for people who already uh, know, like, and trust you to think of somebody else who might need your services or products. So you'll see that this mojo was actually going back to the very beginning. I, I, and this is, the, this is the evolution of the mastermind groups we've been doing is I found the discussion to kind of touch on some of these things that we really hadn't 
done a deep dive on. So I really wanted to do the deep dive on the foundation and just start to build this in layers and to give you guys homework so that the next call you've accomplished something because I don't know about you, you go on all these seminars or you hear speakers and you go, that was a great idea. Then it sits in your um, file cabinet with all the other notes that you had. So I want this to be something that is actionable. And then um, in three months, approximately, you'll have a good foundation. But it, it's never going to be done, right? Because obviously, uh, your business is going to evolve with all, all kinds of, um, let's see, somebody chatted me. I just got to check. Oh, yeah. Uh, Taylor had to leave. So, okay. So um, let me kind of go over the option, then we'll open this up to discussion. Let me see where we are in time. All right, perfect. All right. So as some of you know, I think a good 50% of you have been in the social media marketing class. And we've kind of gone back to um, landing pages and we're gonna still do that. But again, I wanted to give you this foundation to start working on fine tuning the, the goals and the objectives for those. So from now on, this is the exception. This was the live kickoff. From now on, these courses are gonna be um, in my teachable course. You're gonna be able to watch a video and Probably they're going to be somewhere between two and 10 minutes long. Just like this, just like you were just watching this video. And then you're going to have homework. About every two weeks, we're going to come together as an option. Oh, let me kind of finish up this slide. So the value I'm putting on this, and this was kind of hard for me <laughs> because again, this is my first teachable course, but looking at how much content I'm packing into this course, I put a value of 199 on it. Now that may go up in the future because this may turn out to be one of my flagship courses for those of you who've been on the teachable calls. That's the kind of the big, the big enchilada thing. Um, but for, for you guys, what I'm doing is I'm discounting that to 129, just because I can. Now, this is an option. So we are gonna have seven master classes and they're gonna be by Zoom. They're limited to six to nine participants because I want you guys to do the homework from the teachable uh, video. And then these workshops are gonna be basically, okay, tell me what you did or tell us what you did. Would you have questions? Do you need feedback? Whatever it is, you know, working through that. And then you're gonna have another video to watch for the next call. And this is gonna be every two weeks on Friday. So this is gonna replace the marketing. And so for those of you who have already invested in the marketing, you have, I think it's about $30 kind of credit that we will apply to this. So you're not gonna miss out on anything. I'm just kind of re, cause I did the, I did follow my own advice. I, re, I, re, I looked at it and I revised it. So this is a little bit of a pivot, I guess. And it's gonna be at 8.30 in the AM. That seems to work for everybody. And it's gonna be about 60 to 75 minutes long depending on how many participants we have. Now, for those who aren't good on Friday mornings and if we have a big enough group, we can start it on a different time, but just let me know. But for the people I've kind of polled, Friday mornings still seem to work. That option is 70 bucks. That's $10 per, per, or, you know, $10 per call. And the reason I did that was because again, I, um, the value I have been putting on my time and it's creeped up. I remember when I started my business, um, it was at least $55 an hour. It's kind of crept up to 80 as of now. And I look at my competition and they charge like $125 an hour. But for what I, for, um, what I have to invest, because I work for my home, I figured my $80 is fair for at least now. And so what I also did was um, figured if I get six people on, that's an hour of my time to spend with you guys. And you're not having to spend, spend it on one in one time. However, I'm also adding, so if you do want one-on-one -on -one time, because you really want to focus on a landing page or you really want to um, get some feedback on a video or help with something very specific, that I'm disc discounting to 60 per hour. So part of the package is you can call me and say, you know, I need your help on this, whether it's a website or something, and I'm just discounting that. So those are your options as far as for the upcoming Fridays. So we are kicking this off on Friday at least the first group of people. 
So I've already heard from some of you, um, you're in, I'm gonna follow up with um, getting you set up with your credits or whatever, if you have credits. If you have not signed up and are interested, let me know um, by tomorrow morning or call me if you have questions. This is new, uh, but I'm kind of, ex I'm, well, actually, no, I'm really excited about this because as I mentioned, it turns out, who, well, I, it turns out I love to teach. I, and I'll tell you the story. And I, I, I have been living my own career my whole life. Uh, my actual first uh, ex experience in this was back in 1970, going back a ways, I was a junior in high school and my science teacher got us involved in the very first Earth Day. That's how long it's been around. And I remember reading about, you know, environmental impact and population growth and all this. And I thought that's important to me. I got really passionate about that. So I had a degree in environmental studies. And about two years into doing field work, I got to spend time in Yosemite and Sea Ranch doing research. But I decided getting up at 4 a.m. to go out and, and look at live traps to count deer mice <laughs> was not something I was passionate about. I love the environment, but research was not my thing. So that's why I taught my, or I actually combined my degree with computer science because we were using computers to do population projections and all that. So that was my skill set. So my whole career has been taking what I love to do and finding a way to, you know, have a career in that. And then I left corporate back in about 20 years ago but I'm, I'm still doing what I love to do. And because when I took an aptitude test back in high school, they said, you love to teach. And I couldn't see myself teaching a bunch of third graders. That did not appeal to me. But it turns out that aptitude about teaching, you know, man, has manifested itself in these ongoing Zoom calls. I used to do courses at National University and things like that. So you being here allows me to do what I want to do. But back to one other story, I remember sitting on a couch telling Bill I wanted to quit my job at Aerojet, but I didn't know how I was going to do that because I wanted to teach, I wanted to help people, and I said, I don't know how I'm going to do that. But that one verbal acknowledgement of my mojo started me on a path because the, the solutions are out there. You know, the solutions are out there. You just have to define that. And you say, oh, here's something that will help me. Or here's a course I can take. Or here's something I can learn. And as long as you have the objective, that final destination that you envision for yourself, the resources are out there. So that's the exciting part. Um, is that if you start down that journey, that path, you're going to find your way. There's no way you can't, as long as you got that motivation and that energy and that enthusiasm, because that's the thing that's gonna drive you to get to what you want. So let us, oh, let me stop my share screen. Sure. Let me open this up to comments or questions, thoughts. You're still with us, Helen, good to see you. She thought she had to leave a little early. Don't be late, don't be late. Any questions or thoughts or ahas? Well, I um, just have a quick comment. I like um, I like the strategic planning that goes into the Mojo idea, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't done enough of that. So, so exploring that with the group will be, I think, beneficial. Um, Ross and I actually started doing some strategic planning for the coming year. And so this is perfect timing for us in preparation for that. And um, I'm excited to see how it comes about and everybody's ideas. Oh, good. Yeah. And it, you'll find that I'm an analytic. I like to break things down. Um, I like formulas, which is why I like acronyms. So, um, and, and part of that is just because all this is not new. You know, all the success oriented stuff, goal planning, all that is not new. And so for me to enter this space of saying, okay, I have something to teach is really just coming from my perspective, you know, my experiences and how I, I see things. So that's true for everybody. Again, we all have competition, but you have to 
you have to own the value that you bring mm -hmm. and be excited about that because <laughs> that's what's going to connect with people out there. So I'm, I'm glad you made that comment because actually the mojo that came to me at 7 a.m. I'm laying in my bed <laughs> thinking about what am I going to title this first course? And I go, oh, and it works out. The acronyms kind of worked out and it, it tied into other things I'm teaching. So it, yeah, I was kind of excited about that. Uh, Jamie, I saw your hand. What I really like too is that, and I've used this analogy before, it's like an upward spiral. And even though we've learned a lot of this stuff in the past, we're at a different level. And so it means something different or we've experienced something different. Mm -hmm. So I think that this whole thing can apply to any kind of career or lifestyle we choose. Um, I mean, I've been through a lot of them at this point and now I'm going into another one. And all of a sudden things that maybe didn't make sense or weren't comfortable before are becoming so. And I can dive deeper into these concepts. Good. Yeah. Well, and I knew that some of you have gone through these kinds of exercises and planning stages before. So it may, you may just breeze through it, but I think it always is worthwhile revisiting it, especially with a different perspective. And that's why that master class group is going to be valuable because somebody's going to have a little different take on something that you did. And that's where uh, you'll gain, you know, again, that's where the mastermind concept comes from, you know, Two heads are better than one, but you got multiple heads. <laughs> Game I'm time. really um, just another comment to expand on what I said earlier is I'm 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 totally in. I'm excited. My um, training and my degree was in strategic planning. That was one of the um, focuses on my MBA. But it's a lot different when it's a concept that you're learning versus something you're putting into actual practice. Mm -hmm. And so taking all of this, I'm really excited about it, actually. Okay. So, yeah. Well, and it's, you know, you can read about riding a bike, right? <laughs> but it's another thing to get on the bike, you know, fall off the bike, you know, hit, the, hit and try to do, I can't imagine mountain biking. You see them coming down those hills. It's like, if you really wanted to learn how to do that, you could, but you have to be motivated. <laughs> There has to be the why, but I'm, I thank you for that, Yvonne. Any other, uh, Pat has her hand up. Uh, Susan, I'm totally in. I think I already told you I wanted to be in. And even though I've taken many classes that you have facilitated, I, I see this as a personal motivator for me. As a matter of fact, one of the chapters in my book is called My Personal mojo dojo which you helped me get that chapter name uh, because it's it's a training ground for me because a lot of times we don't concentrate on ourselves and what we need to promote the business and i i i need this as a motivator um and i i look forward to even if it's a review of some of the stuff i have to hear things several times before we it all do sinks in <laughs> and I can start concentrating on it. And the fact that we're gonna have homework that is due every two weeks, that's gonna push me even uh, further. So I, I'm looking forward to it, so. Awesome. Well, and let me mention this because I know we've talked about this. So I am taking this course and I'm putting it in Teachable, right? I would love it if you would, some of you would think about how can aspects of the course that I'm doing tie into a course you might do? Because I know, like Pat, you mentioned that Mojo Dojo. Maybe you can take some things that I'm, you know, not going deep dive into and deep dive into it yourself. Same mm -hmm. with you, Jamie and Yvonne, you know, like with the writing and stuff. There's aspects that I would love to be able to kind of segue into the things that you're doing. And that's what makes the group powerful. We're not just marketing ourselves. We're helping each other and, you know, sinking in with each other. And, and actually, so to tell you something, I was on a call. If you recall, one of the classes we all took was with uh, Kate Putnam. She does that brand typography thing. So she had a call uh, one morning. It was at 6 a.m. But that was the morning I got up early and I said, okay, I might as well watch your <laughs> 6 a.m. Because it, it was international. She had people calling in from all over the world. And um, let's see, there were over 100 people because my video froze and I got kicked out and then I couldn't get back in because the room was full. So I know she had over a hundred people. 
And that doesn't motivate me. I mean, that was kind of cool for her, but having people from around the world isn't my motivator. I would rather have a circle of you guys and focus on that. That energizes me and hear success stories that you have. I really want to build this uh, personal relationship rather than, you know, that. But we'll see. Maybe in five years, I will change. <laughs> but right now, my motivation is you guys and see you get motivated. And see, so you take some of the tools that I've um, discovered or am learning on myself. I'm learning a lot of these tools myself together. And to kind of again segue, so for those of you who are on the teachable group, I need that, on the teachable group, we're going to kind of go on how to create those videos. You know, because I know that that's a challenge. Uh, creating those videos um, is not necessarily intuitive, but how do you do that? So for those of you who are interested in doing online teaching, that's going to be a different focus than this mojo thing and moving on to the um, acceleration class. I call it the acceleration class. Uh, yeah, Julie. Oh, you got, you're muted. You're muted. I can unmute you. There you go. I, I, I muted. My phones are going off. I don't know why. I know. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody other call, they don't call otherwise. Um, could you run through one more time the breakdown? The 129 is for. Okay, so 129 is for, let me share my screen again, just so it's up. Let's see here. Yeah, you just like to get off the screen. Yeah, I know, huh? Make myself small. Um, okay. So the online course, I'm not sure how many modules it will be, but every, every uh, week there's going to be a module. <clears throat> there's going to be an online course. So you're gonna watch a short video, usually between two and three minutes. There might be homework, like at the end of each of these slides, I gave you a to-do list. Okay. And a lot of times I provide you a PDF file or something you know, to kind of use as a, a marker. And for those of you who have the mind map, mind map program, I use that a lot. That to me has been a really good visual on keeping everything kind of in front of me because I can shrink things and expand things and segue things. <clears throat> so if you have the mind map program, we're gonna kind of use that in some of these videos as homework. If you don't, you can still do it on paper or other tools, but I use the mind map program a lot. <clears throat> then the master class is optional, but that's gonna be the, 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 a group like this, where you've done, you watch the video, you've done the homework, and this is just our discussion time. Because I find, you know, like today, we spent 30 minutes on the training. I would like the, this, the, the, this time to be for you guys to discuss your questions, you know, get some feedback on things, et cetera. So that's an option because you really don't need that to take the course. But I see that the feedback I've gotten, that's been one of the most valuable things people have gotten is being able to discuss and get feedback on. And then accountability also, right? <laughs> because you got to do the the homework from the previous week in order to participate well in the class. And then the one-on-one -on -one consulting is just an, another option. So if you prefer, you could actually do all three or you can do the course and the one-on-one -on -one consulting or you can do the course and the master class. but those are the options. And that's gonna be on the Mojo. It's gonna be, uh, as I sh showed in the, in the um, uh, iceberg slide, it's gonna be the Mojo, but also all those other layers on top of it. Okay. Now, some of it, like branding, is actually going to be a whole different course. We, uh, you know, I, Pat and I had taken this course where she, was it called the deep dish? <laughs> she used to call it the deep dish. We're going to go deep dish into this. And so because I was using iceberg analogies, we're going to have the deep dive. So some of these things we're going to really, um, we're going to go deeper into it, but we not, may not go cover the whole thing because that's a whole new course, right? But we are going to cover, let me go back to that slide. Let me see here if I can go back previous no oh, i gotta go uh, uh i'll just go to the slides here there you go this one here here so you'll see that we're gonna we just covered the mojo today you got some homework from that <clears throat> then we're gonna go on with brand refinement marketing follow-up uh, for those of you who have been on some of the calls, I've been using a tool called HubSpot, which is a, a contact management system. The nice thing about that is they have a free version that has a lot of functionality into that. So um, we are going to look at, again, cost-effective tools. 
we're not going to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on tools unless you unless it's going to be cost effective to you but i think for most of us we can either start with the free or the uh relatively inexpensive versions of that but those are the things we're going to start to build on uh you know follow-up systems because again you got to automate a lot of this stuff we don't have time to juggle hundreds and hundreds of balls or the skill to do that so we have to use technology and again if top technology is one of your obstacles we're either going to determine you know training you on how to overcome those obstacles or you're going to say i'm going to outsource that i don't expect everybody to love to do everything in their job because we can't because there's so many different hats that we have to wear but we want to wear the hats more often that we love to wear <laughs> <laughs> and not deal with those things that we are good at, don't love to do, or don't have time to do. Okay, does that answer your question, Julie? And feel free to call me if you have more specific questions, but um, we're gonna be kicking this off. And again, it's gonna be limited to nine. Um, I, 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 I sense we're at least halfway full right now. So if it's something that you're interested in participating in, be sure to let me know before Friday. Okay, uh, let's see. I don't know, Kim, are you still washing your dog or grooming your dog? <laughs> I'm here. You're done? <laughs> we took a break. Done? Did you have any thoughts or comments? We haven't seen you too much on these mastermind calls. I just wanted to make sure you were getting something out of them still. Um, honestly, I haven't been in tune with them, um, but I, I, I've always enjoyed your classes. I think you, um, you bring a lot to the table with regards to just trying to keep all of us wanderers focused um and uh i like that you know i invested a couple of years ago in a crm program that honestly i just gave up recently because i wasn't spending the time needed to really do it any justice so for me that's part of part of it you know mm -hmm. it's uh, i think like a lot of small business owners um we try to take the whole elephant and don't take the, you know, one bite at a time kind of thing right. um, and uh, get yourself overwhelmed. And, and I've found myself there plenty of times. So uh, I kind of like the concept. Or I really like the concept of where you're headed and uh, yeah, I like it. Well, good. Hopefully you'll check it out because um, you were talking about keep, is that the one you invested in? It was. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, yeah, as you know, I had used intrusion soft, which turned into keep years ago and I got frustrated with it. Uh, I started using a, a CRM called Podio, which I still love. I'm still going to use it, but it's pretty techy. And I knew that I couldn't teach it to most people. So I actually found one called HubSpot after researching about five or six. I mm -hmm. really like it um, because there's a lot of functionality that's free. Um, and it, it solves a lot of problems, like we talked about landing pages for marketing, is helping people create a landing page if they don't have access to their website or um, have a website even, creating landing pages and creating chat bots and online forums and putting them into your CRM and all that is built in. So what I'm doing with part of this class is once we get to that part, is showing them what see that what the crm does and again you can choose another one but it's going to be easier to teach you on the one where you know that i i found and um start to build on it because it's it is it's you know it, it has to be broken down into chunks which is really why i kind of went back to ground zero which is the mojo because you have to you have to be invested in your business emotionally <laughs> enthusiastically in order to get somewhere because if you aren't your energy is going to run out. Your interest will run out. So my goal is to kind of keep all that running, making sure you're focusing on what you love to do because that's the, that's the whole benefit for being your own boss, right? <laughs> Making decisions about where you're spending your time and your energy. But it's good to at least uh, hear you, Kim, if we don't get to see you live. <laughs> we miss you. Um, okay, so any other thoughts or comments before we wrap this up? I'm just checking the time. All right, so again, I've heard from some of you. If I haven't heard specifically, I will send an email out again so you have a chance to respond. Um, I will see some of you on Friday. So for now, look at the homework you got today and I'll send out the slide deck too in case you didn't take notes um, so you can review that and start to work on those lists. Start to work on, you know,
doing the goals. And that's what we're going to focus on Friday on where you are with those lists, okay? All right, guys. Have a good uh, Wednesday. Thank you. Okay, bye. Nice to see everybody. Yep, nice to see you. Yes, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.